Hello guys, welcome to Let's Spend Recaps. Today we are going to recap an American war drama film called Seven Years in Tibet. During the Second World War, Henrik, an Austrian guy, joins a group of Germans to climb the ninth highest mountain in the world, the Nanga Parvat. He joins the expedition, leaving behind his pregnant wife to avoid the birth of his child that he never wanted in the first place. His wife gives birth to a baby boy while he's still on the expedition. He feels lost and distracted, thinking about his wife and his newborn baby. Seeing an avalanche building towards the climbers, the leader decides to take the entire team back. On their way back, they are captured by the British Army as prisoners of war. They are told that a war has broken out between Britain and Germany, and hence any alien enemy on British Empire soil is a prisoner of war. Henrik and the other climbers are imprisoned in India. Henrik sends a letter to his wife telling her that he has been imprisoned by the British Army. His wife, in reply to the letter, tells him that she wants a divorce and encloses the divorce papers along with the letter. Henrik is heartbroken to read the letter but feels helpless and shattered. The entire group of climbers devise a plan to escape the prison. Their leader, Peter, dresses up as a British officer and the rest of the climbers dress as Indians, fooling the Indians on duty at the prison. As soon as the team escapes the prison, Hendrik leaves their side and goes off on his own. On his way to Tibet, Hendrik reached somewhere in North India. He is hungry, tired and sick of the stale food he's been eating. About 68 kilometers away from Tibet, Peter finds Hendrik. He's carrying a lot of food that tempts Henrik and he offers Peter to let him accompany him to Tibet. They reach Tibet where they find out that the Tibetans don't welcome foreigners into their land. They ask the two to leave and send guides with them to escort them back to the Indian borders. On their way back, they stop at a market where Henrik convinces Peter to trade a watch his father had given him for food. In the process of tempting Tibetan traders with their fancy clothes and shoes, they fool their escorts and run away. Peter and Henrik get into an argument and Peter leaves owing to Henrik's rude and insensitive behavior. Henrik runs behind him to apologize and they continue their travel together. Henrik shares his pain of never being able to meet his son with Peter. Peter convinces him to write a letter to his son. He writes a letter addressed to his son, sharing snippets of his journey and his experiences in the past few years since he left Austria, and continues to write him letters thereafter. One night, while Peter and Henrik are camping in the mountains, they are found and captured by a local tribe. At night, when everybody is sleeping, they escape the tribe's camp and steal their horses. They kill the horses and eat their meat to satisfy their hunger. With the help of a group praying and hiking towards the holy city of Lhasa, Peter and Henrik also reach the city. Lhasa, the holy city of Tibet and the home of Dalai Lama, also didn't allow foreigners to enter their land. They sneak into the city and start looking for something to eat. They see an old lady feeding her dogs. They wait for the lady to go in and immediately leap onto the dog's food. The lady hears a noise and starts beating them with the broom that she was holding in her hand. She is interrupted by her husband who realizes that Peter and Henrik are hungry and tired and offers them to stay at his place for lunch. The husband then presents himself before the Dalai Lama to seek permission to let the two foreigners stay in the city. The Dalai Lama is a young boy. The man explains to the head of the government the plight of Peter and Henrik and how they shall be taken prisoners if they are not given shelter in Lhasa and forced to go back to India. Peter and Henrik clean up in the man's house and soon meet a female tailor sent to them by a minister named Ngawang Jikmi to get new clothes stitched. Henrik feels attracted to the only tailor in the city who was capable of stitching western clothes. Both Peter and Henrik smile foolishly while she takes their measurements. The two soon get new clothes from the tailor. 
One day, Henrik finds an excuse to see the tailor again, only to find that Peter was already there to meet the tailor with an excuse. The three Peter, Henrik and the tailor, go to the market. The two try to impress her with their charm and compete with each other for her attention. Three of them go for ice skating, where Henrik watches Peter and the tailor bonding with each other. The Dalai Lama, who is still a young boy, watches them ice skating from his palace. Peter and the tailor soon get married after a few months and invite Henrik over lunch. Henrik is jealous to see the two together. The scene is soon shifted to a day when a man comes up to Henrik and tells him that Germany has surrendered and the war is over. Henrik rushes back to his house to pack his bags. While he's packing, he receives a letter from his son, telling him to stop writing him letters. Henrik is depressed and gives up on the idea of going back home. He soon receives a letter from the Dalai Lama to come see him at his place. He meets His Holiness's mother, who makes Henrik acquainted with the protocol of meeting the Dalai Lama. The Dalai Lama is fascinated to see Henrik's blonde hair. His Holiness asks Henrik to build him a movie theater as he is extremely fond of watching movies. His Holiness also asks Henrik to teach him about the world that he's come from. They meet every day and talk about geography and other modern technologies that Henrik is acquainted with. And Henrik soon develops a strong bond with the Dalai Lama. As the new leader of the Republic of China is chosen, the ministers of Tibet receive an offer from China to join the Republic of China and accept them as their sovereign. Tibet refuses to do so and tells the Chinese leader that Tibet doesn't recognize any foreign sovereign power. At a Christmas celebration, Henrik gives Peter the same watch that he had convinced him to trade for food the time they had reached Tibet. Peter loves the gift and hugs Henrik. While everyone is enjoying the party, the Dalai Lama dreams of his village being ransacked by the Chinese troops. He calls for Henrik, who tells His Holiness about his time climbing mountains Henrik also tells His Holiness that his presence makes him feel as calm as he used to feel while climbing mountains. The Tibetans at Lhasa start preparing for war at the Dalai Lama's village and most of the northern parts of Tibet are invaded and acquired by the Chinese troops. One of the ministers of the Tibetan cabinet, Wang Jigmi, proposes friendship to the Chinese generals. The army general of the People's Republic of China enters the temple and steps on the mandala of sand, the symbol of enlightenment and peace the Tibetan monks had been making for days. The general disrespects the Dalai Lama and the Tibetan customs but His Holiness still treats him with respect and dignity. They propose religious freedom as long as Tibet accepts China as its political master. The Dalai Lama tells him that he is oblivious to the complexities of these political matters. He is only a religious monk and follows the words of the Buddha. He tells the general that he and his people are strictly against violence. The general leaves the temple in frustration and continues the Tibetan invasion. Gawang Jigme plans to send Tibetan troops to the city of Chamdo, the gateway to Tibet, to stop the progression of Chinese troops. While the Tibetan army is still on its way, one night they are attacked by the Chinese troops. The great numbers of Chinese soldiers and their sophisticated weapons kill the entire Tibetan troops. Jigme surrenders before the Chinese forces and destroys their munition dumps. Without their munition dumps, there was no hope for the Tibetans to win. The Chinese troops break the gates and acquire Tibet. Henrik goes up to Jigme and returns the jacket he had once gifted him. Henrik tells him that he wishes him a long and shameful life and that will be the punishment for betraying his people. As the Dalai Lama gets closer to the age of majority, arrangements are being made for his enthronement as the spiritual and the temporal leader of Tibet. Henrik tries to convince him to escape Tibet as his life is now in danger. The Dalai Lama tells Henrik that his salvation is in helping his people, 
while Henrik's salvation is in going back to his country and by being a father to his son. Henrik agrees and tells His Holiness that he'll leave after the ceremony of enthronement. Henrik meets Peter and his wife before leaving for Austria. Henrik meets the Dalai Lama too. The Dalai Lama wishes him good luck and sends him a musical box as he leaves Tibet to meet his child. Henrik reaches Austria and goes to his wife's house to meet his son. He leaves the same musical box that the Dalai Lama had given him in his son's room. He looks at his son for the first time in more than 10 years. As they grow old, Henrik teaches his son how to climb the mountains. He mounts the Tibetan flag on the mountains that he climbs to show his solidarity with the struggle of the Tibetans. 